Hello to everyone and welcome to another Marina Genic video by Adventure Story Channel. Today, my dear friends, we will continue to see our air compressor and we will move further and further and more deeper and deeper and we will arrive until the maintenance point. First of all, we understand all the parts of preparation, of proper usage of the checks what we need to, to check and also the safety precautions to take and still there is always this combined together in any work that we do but here we can see clearly how we move and step by step process of working and the working idea at all so today we will as you can see here in this page we will discuss about the initial oiling and when we fill the oil we also remove the side cover from the crankcase we turn with the, a bar a turning bar here as you can see and the oil is supplied to the main bearing crown pin and the lower portion of the cylinder wall uh, by hand so we will only only all the things all the parts of the air compressor don't forget only to leave the turning bar uh, here because it will be hit and maybe damage or accident will occur don't forget that here also we can see depends on the type of air compressor we have which you can see and determine from the label which is installed on the front of air compressor you can see some uh, oil capacities from low level to high of each type and there is table available in the manual so we will move lower and we will see also when the compressor installs how we make the alignment there is two kind of alignments and this kind of alignments will be applied also on other equipment which have shafts and flanges to connect between there is a concentric alignment as shown in the figure 19 here this is the concentric alignment and how to mount the dial gauge so the magnet we will line here on the motor side and the dial gauge will be applied here on the flywheel and as we rotate the flywheel we will read the deflection uh, gauge pointer measure should be taken in four points with 90 degrees interval and adjust by shifting the vertical and horizontal position of the compressor and rotor so that the flexion of the dial gauge pointer should not be exceed 0.08 millimeters first of all i like to stand a little bit here uh, the most important thing is to set also proper your compressor and your motor so it will be aligned align in the stand, in the main stand where the support is and after that if you have all properly set on the bottom you will move here to fix these faces and make parallel uh, this connection next we will go to the step 2 which is parallelism of flywheel and face as shown here in figure 20 sorry I go a little bit down in this figure here and as you can see also we place again in the motor but the gauge here will be set in this surface also the measurement is same it's four different points by 90 degrees interval and insert the liner under the motor of the compressor adjust so that the deflection dial gauge we have different measure here we have 0 0.15 millimeters so if you uh, if you are inside in these limits your uh, set and alignment it's proper 
Also, you must have in mind that the most of the crankshafts uh, have a, a side clearance, so the measure maybe fluctuate. You must have also this also in mind, and you must insert the turning bar into the set of whole flywheel and turn it so to pull to the motor side mostly. And there is also data on the shop trial record which you can compare, you can see also and you must have also a reading so you can compare to see what you have, what is going on if you have some kind of that one. But you will ask me in what cases you will do such alignment, okay? You will do such kind of alignment in the case that you have uh, remove your motor for overhauling of the bearings, you will do that uh, alignment. But anyway, if you remove, try to put some marks and measurements before you remove your motor or your compressor. So you will have also a reference and how was placed your motor or compressor on the base. Always there is a science for the test run. Be sure to disconnect the main power supply before wiring the motor. Do not touch the attachments. As we have seen before, we have speak all that, the precautions about also the feeling that the compressor must be stopped. And let's go on the bottom. We have speak also for the high temperature parts. Let's go more down below. And here, when we like to make a test run, the checks what we do. We check the anchor bolts that are well tied. We check that all the nuts, all the nuts, all the bolts is tight on the machine. We have filled to the high level. We have opened these drains that shown here in the second stage and in the first stage drain valves. We check also the cooling that is applied, there is some uh, plastic uh, circles here inside which show you that there is flow of the water, that not person that is working on the machine and of if also there is no substance around uh, the machine. So if you have made all the checks, you can uh, switch on the power and also very important is to check the rotation, the direction rotation of your equipment of the flywheel here. There is a mark here on the cover and a mark on the flywheel so you can compare, you can make a start stop quickly just to see. Don't forget before you start your equipment to have all the valves open to make your equipment ready and if you have a reverse rotation you should check your connection of uh, the terminal box here and change the wiring. But also we have a message here before changing the wiring, switch off the power supply, the main power supply. So in the first startup, what to check after overhauling or some maintenance, we check our oil pressure must rise 0 0.2 megapascal which to turn to bars is two bars and that is the reading that we must see if we see for any reason the oil rises 0 0.4 0 0.6 megapascal on the startup maybe this is not an indication of abnormality but we need first of all to stabilize uh, the temperature of oil as the compressor is working. As we know, when the temperature increases, the oil pressure decreases because due to the change of the viscosity. The next step, what we check is that the oil pressure adjustment is proper. And when the oil pressure does not rise up 0 0.2 megapascal and above in case of the oil pressure switch is equipped, the machine runs about approximately for 10 seconds timer, set time and stops. 
Turn off the power switch and examine the cause of trouble. If for any case the pressure is not rise, the, there is a protection for the R compressor. And we will need to find the cause of that kind of trouble. Uh, happened to me, and I will share it with you, that the air was trapped, and I will I told also in my previous videos that air was trapped in the power switch of the close to the oil pressure switch. There was uh, some kind of piping which transmit the pressure, and some air bubbles was trapped there. And the only thing that we need to do is the venting from the highest point. Always remember that the venting must be done from the highest point. So next we will go that and we will check that the quantity of cooling water adjustment is proper. The adjust quantity of water, so the maximum temperature at the cooling water outlet is 50 degrees Celsius or below. And the difference between the inlet temperature and the outlet is 10 degrees or below. We have seen the table, we have speak about that, it's really important. Mostly we keep our low temperature cooling to this point of 36 degrees about, something like that, okay? Depends the condition of the seawater, this can variable and go higher or lower. But mostly we have constant temperature and we try to keep a constant uh, cooling water temperature on our fresh water. After a major overhauling or some jobs that we have do on the air compressor, the best choice is to run without load. The no load run is the starting of the compressor for 30 minutes under no load. With the stop valve of delivery, air receiver tank open, so there is not increase of pressure. After that, when we have test of our compressor of no load, we can load gradually. The first load will be to 10 bars, 1 megapascal here, and then we will increase to 2 megapascals, which is 20 bars. In period of 5 to 10 minutes each. There is also a table available, a load table. And also this table here shows where is our values for the stages, which we will see later. So next we will check for any abnormality and this also checks will be applied and for the other equipment as well. Check the temperature at cooling water outlet and temperature of discharging air. You have uh, always thermometers available there. We have pressure gauges available. You can also feel and smell any abnormal deflection on the instrument during the load run okay our body is like instrument also to feel the vibration to listen to smell we have five elements to determine uh, in case that something is going wrong if any of abnormality is detected immediately stop the operation and try to find it or contact with manufacturer or shop service next we will check also the automatic control that is working perfectly, the switches and the temperature switch which can be tested with immersing in uh, the hot water, the element in the hot water. Also the automatic start-stop pressure switch that the compressor must stops when the pressure rise in the air receiver tank, air bottle, in different uh, name that we have on board, or main reservoirs. On the upper limit must be stop that we have set and restarts again when the pressure drops to the lower set value. 
And this table show us the values, the indication values in megapascals for the first stage, for four bars to six bars, for second stage, 24.5 bars to 29.4 bars. Oil pressure must be from two to four. And water pressure gauge must shown from 0 0.02 to 0 0.2 megapascal. So, to move in the next step, okay, for the operation, we have seen what to check for the wiring and all that things, what to be careful about the oil temperatures again, the high temperature parts. As you can see, there is a lot of warning signs as you uh, travel inside the manual and as you will be contribute with such material you'll be able uh, in your working environment to determine the danger and you will make also a assessment before any work you will assess in any time in any condition and in any place that you're working the danger this is the most important and after you assessed all the things, your work can be done without any problem and with you will enjoy really your work. So guys, for today, I believe it's enough. We will continue in our next videos. Thank you that you have subscribed and you are stay tuned with your thumbs always on the top. I really, really appreciate your comments and please comment more about the videos and share you also your experience so we can contribute more and more. Thank you again. Bye-bye.